going on, Jerome's going on, Poppy. So we're doing another seven round Vikings mock draft and free agency full off season in the event that the Vikings do end up trading Daniil Hunter this time to the Tennessee Titans. Of course, Daniil going through liking some tweets uh, about him getting traded to Tennessee or uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. And yeah, it's not great. It's not great. And uh, uh, what was it last week? Maybe we did the seven round mock where Daniil got sent to the Raiders. Sorry for putting that out in the universe. Just unfortunately speaking it, it to existence but uh, we need contingency plans and donnie this is not vietnam there are rules here so our parameters is the tennessee titans where you see pretty much every single mock draft they're looking for edge help they got jeffrey simmons on the inside they got landry uh at linebacker but they just need that edge and it didn't work out with uh jade van Clowney, even though they might bring him back uh so if they are going to make a move for daniel hunter and even though daniel wants might want out of town. We're going to gouge your eyes out. We want full value. We want Laramie Tunsil type uh, compensation. We want Khalil Mack type compensation. And the Vikings get that in this spot. Getting the Titans first round pick this year. Their second round pick this year. As well as a 2022 first round pick. So, it's unfortunate. So, Edge becomes a premier need for the Vikings. Even though the cupboard isn't exactly bare. You do have DJ Wanham and Afadi. Even though you had him last year. And it wasn't that great. But a year older and wiser with Wanham. But you're going to address that in free agency. Uh, the Vikings do save some cap space by moving to Neil Hunter. But, yeah, let's get into the nitty-gritty here. So, we already traded him. We ain't trading anyone else. Nah. Uh, so, as of right now, the Vikings have well after moving to neil it's estimated the vikings have 21.19 million in cap size it's not accurate but we're gonna roll with it friends over at fan speak all right so what are we gonna do first so we basically just go through the rest of the off season kind of how we would normally i think that they do bring anthony barr back and he says that he's against the restructure but okay okay or back on a pay cut. I'm actually going to cut him and bring him back. Same thing with Riley Reef. Uh, we'll restructure Thielen and Kendricks. We will we will cut Harrison Smith, but we will be extending him. So don't freak out. Uh, Delvin, cutting Stefan. Uh, cutting Dan Bailey. Cutting Skullquit. Cutting... Who else are we cutting? Uh, we're letting uh, Chad Beebe go on his RFA tender. We are going to cut Jalen Holmes. We are going to cut Drew Samia. We're going to cut... Uh, who else we got cut? And uh, Austin Cutting's already gone. Deuces. Harrison, uh, everyone else can stay. I'm sure, why not? Next. So, like we said, it's more procedural that we're getting. Uh, well, we cut Harrison Smith, but we're obviously bringing him back and uh, at a contract that is commensurate to his value. We give him ten million per year for three years and we'll guarantee 65 percent of it I welcome aboard harrison smith nice to know you nice to meet you if they do lose daniel i think the vikings will make a more concerted effort to keep wilson and and uh anthony barr and and perhaps they do use anthony barr a little bit more on the edge uh, in the absence of daniel hunter pending what happens in free agency and in the draft bring eric wilson back on the cheap cheap all right ride the reef how about eight million for two years, and then we'll guarantee six percent of it. Okay, and then we'll bring Anthony Barr back. Well, let's give him that seven million, seven point one million that is fully guaranteed on the third day of the new league year, plus some incentives, and let's see if he can claw that back. Oh, there you go. All right, so we still have Buku cap space heading on in, and I don't want to resign anyone else. So we're on to the next one. So what do we do? Well, Edge is a major free agency uh, need as well as in the draft, but also defensive tackle uh, as well as guard. So, I mean, the Vikings still have the same holes, but just with a, a massive gaping one uh, with Daniel Hunter gone now. Uh, so we have 42.3 million in cap space, both through the cuts and the restructures and guys being brought back at lower rates. I still want to sign Matt Prater. Or do we sign Cody Parkey this time around? Or do we just gra draft a kicker? We, we could just do that. Uh, safety wide receiver. A linebacker, you're good to go since got Wilson and Barr back. Uh, we got a kicker and punter. Okay. So, let's look at the free agency edges. Probably going to be on the mark, uh, out of range for Juden and Barrett. 
You could bring in a guy like Kerrigan or Houston on a veteran deal. I'm okay bringing in Leonard Floyd because Floyd was a bust in Chicago, but he had a nice little rehab year uh, with the Rams. I have, I'm, I'm not going to spend up a ton for him. Uh, and then what else we got here? Well, guard. So Scherf, ooh, I mean, if Brandon Scherf hits the market and the Vikings do have the cap space, you're, you're going after him. So $17 million for four years, and then we'll guarantee 75% of it. Do that defensive tackle. I mean, you could go big game hunting here. I don't really see it. Bringing a guy like Daquan Jones or uh, Gachow or Shelby Harris makes more sense. Or Arby Jones. I, I did like Arby Jones in Jacksonville. Uh, so let's give him $3 million for one year, and then we'll guarantee 75% of that, uh, as well as wide receiver three. Uh, we've always gone like Chris Conley, but let's go fun. Let's let's get John Ross. Who's the boss? John Ross is the boss. Uh, $2 million bucks for one year, and then we'll guarantee 75% of that. Quarterback-wise, uh, who do we want? So we always go uh, Alex Smith or RG3 because it's so, sort of funny to me. But uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is on the market now. Joe Flacco, no. CJ Beathard, no. Gabbert, Super Bowl champion Blaine Gabbert, no. Brandon Allen is a guy uh, that I liked when he was in Denver. I liked the cut of his jib. Uh, we'll get him one year. And then he ended up in uh, Washington this year. And then he got her. So let's see what we got in free agency. So Brandon Allen said no. John Ross said yes. Scherf said yes. Leonard Floyd said no. Arby Jones said no. So uh, we got one massive need out of the way in terms of guard. Uh, John Ross, I mean, if he contributes, great. I'm uh, definitely going to use him as a kick returner, which is really stupid that the uh, Bengals didn't do that because he's one of the most pro- prolific uh, kick returners in college football history when he's at Washington. Oh, him and Jake Browning. Chemistry. So back on the edge, we want to want to go after someone. Because you don't want to go into the draft naked. Uh, Aquara from the Lions is there. I mean, Charles Harris, uh, the, the failed uh, first rounder. Was he a first rounder from Mizzou? Really doesn't matter. I mean, Alden Smith is there. But, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Tano Passano, no. Uh, so we got the money. I mean, do we make a big play? I mean, do we go after Shaq Barrett? I mean, why, why, why the hell not? It, it's going to be a lot. So the money you didn't want to pay to Neil, you're going to turn around and give it to Shaq Barrett, which, well, then you get all those draft picks, but sure. Um, Shaq Barrett, $17 million for three years, and that's probably going to, actually, that's really low. $21 million for three years, and we'll, we'll see if, we get, if that gets through. Oh, all right, so Shaq Barrett is in. You kind of feel good about that. But now, so... Shaq Barrett is better suited rushing from the right defensive end spot, so the blind side against the left tackle. And you do need to replace that left defensive end um, uh, of Daniil Hunter. Uh, Fadi's not really cut out there. Weatherly, uh, that's mer- where he mainly played uh, when he was in at edge. So you kind of hedge your bets there. Wanham would, be, would do fine there. But if you do get a guy like Quiddy Pay or Boogie Basham, uh, a little bit more stouter defensive ends that can play on that close side of the field, you do that. Uh, so now what do we want to do? Do I want to check the sit? Sa- well, we're down to $12 million in cap. Do we grab a punter? Hack. Now, Do we want two rookies as a kicker and punter? Not really, but I, I guess that's what's going to happen. Do we pick up a hooker? Keanu Neal is out there. I mean, if Keanu Neal is out there. $8 million for two years, and we'll guarantee 70% of that. All right, so Keanu Neal is in. All right, so recapping. What the hell happened here? So you got Ross, Scherf, Shaq, and you got Neil. Uh, I think we have a couple million bucks left. Uh, let's do we just grab Shelby Harris. Or do we grab K1 Short? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or do we get Demarcus Walker? Well, Demarcus Walker can play inside. He's not a traditional three tech, but he is more of an edge rusher when he came out of Florida State. I'm going to lowball a former second round pick uh, by the Broncos. Never really found his footing, but yeah, he could certainly help uh, in terms of depth on the defensive line. Hey, there we go. Demarcus Walker, dynamite. Demarcus Walker. All right, let's get some. All right, so heading to the draft. So now the Vikings, you have Shaq Barrett at edge. You haven't really addressed three tech, but you double down with Demarcus Walker on the edge. Uh, You have 
Keanu Neal at safety, which you're definitely fine him starting day one. So that takes safety off the off the board. Uh, you got Brandon Scherf, so that checks your guard spot. And you got John Ross. So you are really free to go BPA. You are definitely free to do that. And you do have the draft capital where maybe the Vikings do make a move. Maybe the Vikings should make a move to get their quarterback of the future. Or if a guy is simply there, well, let's see what happens. Let's let five picks bleed off. Let's do that. That was a one, that was a two, that was a three, that was a four, that was a five. All right, so what's happened? Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Boogie Basham, for some reason, went to the Falcons. Okay. Uh, Penny Sewell went off the board uh, at six, uh, at five. Now, I do not expect this series of events. So I do not expect Zach Wilson to fall this far. So I'm actually going to let him go. But what I am going to do is we are going to move up, propose and trade. Who's up next? So the Eagles at six. We ha- we have to leapfrog. We have to leapfrog the Panthers and the Broncos. So let's uh, let's get Howie Roseman on the phone. Actually, no. Maybe there is a world where Zach Wilson does fall. Probably not, uh, but we're still going to do it anyway. Philadelphia Eagles. All right, so we want six. We want 14. Do we give up the future first-round pick that the Tennessee Titans gave us? I mean, we may as well, right? All right. I don't, I don't want to give up future first, though. All right, how about... All right, so... Uh, oh, trade accepted. All right, so we're moving up eight spots. It costs us the future first-round pick that the Titans gave us. Uh, Just a refresher of what happened in the Daniil Hunter trade. So the Vikings, we got 22 from the Titans as well as 53 back in the second round. Future first-round pick that we just sent to Philadelphia, and the Titans got Daniil Hunter. We signed Shaq Barrett in free agency. So, again, I do not expect Zach Wilson to be available at this stage uh, of the draft at number six overall. I think that he falls from the top two picks. I think some team is going to move up and try and go get him, uh, either from the Dolphins, Falcons, or Bengals. But you know what? If it doesn't go down that way, let's go. Let's go. All right, so we're in at six. Zach Wilson, come on in, baby. Let's go. Let's get it. So you were able to go massive BPA and use some of that draft capital. Plus, you still have an extra first-round pick as well as a second-round pick from the Titans. So you're feeling okay about life. You're feeling pretty damn good. All right, let's see what else happened uh, the rest of the draft. So, is he, I mean, some of these simulators, man. So the Eagles still traded down and got a quarterback. They took Tony and uh, Quincy Roach. Okay, okay. So now Parsons is still on board. I do not expect Parsons to be on the board. A- and the fact that the Vikings re-signed Barr and Wilson, yeah, joke is there. Barmore seems to be the obvious choice. Although Derisaw is just sitting there winking at us. I mean, do, do we do it? Do, uh. So we were signed Reef. We signed uh, Brandon Scherf. So, and so left to right, yeah, you can move Ezra Cleveland to left guard. I think that would be smart. So left to right, your offensive line would be Reef, Ezra, Bradbury, Scherf, uh, and Brian O'Neill. That right side of the line, though, man. Let's go. So Barmore at we – didn't, we didn't get any offers to trade down. Do you just take Derrissaw, have him be the sixth offensive lineman? and Because you feel pretty good about the rest of the three-tack class, even if you don't get Barmore. Yep, I'm going to do it. I'm going to stand by my convictions. Oh, or... All right, so... Yeah, we, we do need to go edge early, even though we did get Shaq Barrett as a stand-in. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Like, this is how much I care. Right there. Uh, that's the offensive tackle that is checked at, in the rest of the first round. So Mike Parsons there. So we should and could get into the edge business. Well, we, we have. Well, let, let, let's take a, a pause here. So we got second round pick from the Titans. We got three. Uh, we got. Thought we had three third rounders. No, no. All right. So we got two third rounders. Uh, we got four fourth rounders. Wait, did the Eagles pull a fast one on us? Or no, oh, we got a fifth-round pick from the Eagles. Uh, never mind then. Uh, but see, positions that I want to target. Defensive tackle. Uh, we already got the quarterback. Defensive tackle, edge. We got O-line. Safety, wide receiver. Yeah, I mean, that's doable. All right, so let's go. Let's go. Uh, yeah, I do not expect Michael Parsons to follow first round or joke, uh, but that does seem to happen. Uh, 
in some of these simulations. I, I don't really understand it, but it, it'd be what it be. So let's look at the edge. Asai is there, Weaver, Odigizua, can play edge, except he's going to be better uh, off at three tech. Ronnie Perkins, wow, they're really low on Ronnie Perkins. I might just take Ronnie Perkins. Well, let's look at defensive tackle first. Davion Nixon's there. Well, you, you can get Twyman or Wilson or McNeil a little bit later on, so you're good there. And even though, I yeah, I know Ronnie Perkins is low on this list. Ronnie Perkins is a damn good player. Or do we take a sigh? It's both sides of the Red River shootout. Uh, 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 Ronnie, come. Shy Ronnie, let's go. So you got that box check. So Ed Rusher is in. Three tech is still a need. Uh, you want to partake. Well, you want to grab a guard uh, or potentially a center or a, just summon to your offensive lineman uh, just in case uh, Bradbury isn't going to be that dude in year three. He's looking really skinny, by the way. Uh, so we got a trade offer. I'm not trading with the Bears, even though we traded with them last year. Uh, we have an offer to move down seven spots and pick up a fourth-round pick. Okay, the Los Angeles Chargers of Anaheim. Go ahead. Go ahead. So let's get this thing going. All right, so who's on board? So All right, so there went Twyman. So we got to get to 14. We got to get to 14, and Marvin Wilson is still on board. Hold on for one more day. Or do we take McNeil? <laughs> now, starving for Marvin Wilson. Let's go. Wilson Phillips holding on for one more day. And you're feeling good about this draft so far. We trade up for Zach Wilson. Now, yeah, does Zach Wilson get out of the top five? I kind of doubt it. But if this is a trade up for if the Vikings deem Fields worthy of that or no pants or Trey Lance, song remains the same. As a guy that's going to sit behind uh, Kirk for two years, I ain't trading. I ain't trading. So uh, let's see what else we got here. So wide receivers, I mean, Elijah Moore is there. I do not expect him to be in the third round, so we're just going to sort of ignore him. Kate Johnson, uh, the Schwartz, Darden, Daz. I mean, there's a lot of options here. Cornerback-wise, it's a Norwood. Oh, Stokes. I mean, Stokes did themselves a lot of favors of that 40 time. Safety, LeConte, Murphy, Cisco, Thong Song. All right, uh, just looking at the big board. I mean, Sur I mean, Surratt is a standout. Or or do you take Josh Myers? Even though, are you taking another Ohio State center? Yes, yes, we are. All right. Um, yeah, all right, so there you go. I, I do want to maneuver, though. I, I, I do want to maneuver. So, yeah, we're going to propose a trade. Who's up next? All right, so Ravens at 40. Yeah, Eric DaCosta. Stupid Eric DaCosta. Just take advantage of us again. All right. We'll give you... We'll give you a 4-5. Trade accepted. All right. So we're coming out for Thong Song. Let me see that thong. Let me be go. Da -da -da -da. Andre Sisko. If he can stay healthy and if he can uh, if he can replicate uh, the, the great play that he had his freshman year. Let's go. Let's go. So got a couple trade offers, nine. Start the round. So what do we still have left? Oh. All right, we didn't get the cornerback. All right, so Thomas, Shakur. Oh, Calvin Joseph is there? Shoot. All right, so wide receiver, Schwartz. I do like Schwartz. All right, so we're going to get in the Schwartz business. Cornerback. All right, now we should pay attention to the big board. I do not expect Richie Grant to be available in the fourth round, so we're going to just sort of ignore him. Oh, we're on the clock again. I saw LeBron right. Pete Werner is there. Yeah, even though we re-signed Anthony Barr and Eric Wilson, they're both on one-year deals. So I mean, Pete, Warner, Pete Werner is just a good football player. Him and Troy Dye coming up together. Let's get that. Uh, Cornerback-wise, wow, Aaron Robinson is on board. I do not expect that. I kind of want to double down. Like, so we typically take St. Just or uh, St. Just or Thomas or Brown. We gotta go Kelvin Joseph. Kelvin jo Joseph, Kentucky is a good player too. All right, so we got cornerback checked off. We got wide receiver. Now it's just sort of gravy. I mean, Luke Farrell's there. I mean, yeah, the rest of it is definitely 
gravy because you already got your edge rusher. We get Chauncey Golson a little bit later on. I like him as a lengthy toolsy guy. Malcolm Kuntz is a guy that I like. Hodge. Um, all right, so what do we do? Well, we already got a quarterback. Do we take two? Do we Kirk Cousins, Zach Wilson? Nah. Nah, nah, nah. Uh, Hufunga's there. Yeah, we'll take Hufunga. Why not? So now, since the Vikings have a bazillion picks, it really just is, well, we're, we're going to be good to go. So you can go through. And this is a nice thing about later round picks is that when teams are filling their 90-man roster with UDFAs, the Vikings are able to do it with 6th and 7th round picks. Now, it does cost you a little bit more. Um, and it, maybe it's a mistake uh, with the tightness of the salary cap, but it does get you, in general, a better caliber of player, or at least the, the specter of a better caliber of player. That's why Spielman does it, even though it pisses people off, man. It just really does. I do not expect Moses to be available or our Darius, so we're just going to pass here. I do want to... Uh, we're just going to take Chauncey Golston. Why not? I do want to double down a wide receiver. I mean, does Daz get to this point? I, I don't think he does, but I, I guess it's possible. I guess anything is possible in this random 2020 season. I'm not sure why not. Daz Newsom in the fifth round? Shoot. So you got Daz and Schwartz, and, and you're going to start a 4 by one team. And just We're going to take a page from the uh, Kansas City Chiefs playbook. So you got Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, and just a bunch of track stars. Let's go. Let's go. It's the name of the game nowadays. And now that the Vikings are going to have good protection, Kirk Cousins can actually do things. I can't believe we got Wilson and Darissa. Hashtag blessed. And we have Daniel Hunter to thank. And I know that yeah, people are going to be mad, but I don't care. I'm going to draft two specialists in the sixth round. And, yeah, having a rookie punter and a rookie kicker, probably going to be bad news, but they can come up together. It'll be like uh, Justin Tucker and Sam Cooke, even though I think Sam Cooke's a little bit older than Justin Tucker. But they can grow together, and you know that I'm right. How could you hold me? I feel gold and never say goodbye. And uh, Sixth round is long, man. Bad story picks. And I can't sleep for now without holding your kick. Evan McPherson and Max Duffy. All the we got to the end of the draft. Who are we going to take? A running back. Elijah Mitchell. Oh, crap. There he went. Uh, I, I haven't done a ton of work on the running backs just because of the way the Vikings are set up. I probably should do some. Although, I, I don't really see them taking a, a running back in the draft, even though they have $10 billion. How oh, I mean, Wilson. Even though they have $10 billion draft picks. Yeah, we'll take four stall. Why not? Three Bama tight ends. So you got four stall, you got Ersma Jr., you got Hill Henches. Let's go. And even though the Vikings let go of Rudy, I actually... Don't think they'll be in the market for a tight end early unless somehow BPA is Kyle Pitts because Gronklin is ready to rock and roll. Uh, they like Brandon Dillon and also Hale Henches is a nice blocking tight end. So recapping what the hell went down. So recapping the Daniil trade. So we sent Daniil to Tennessee for 22-53 and a future first round pick. We use that first round pick to package up uh, and get up into the stratosphere uh, and grab and grab Zach Wilson. There we go. And now, also in free agency. So, re-signed Harrison Smith, freshened up his contract, brought back uh, Eric Wilson on the cheap. Same thing with Anthony Barr on a pay cut. The same thing with Riley Reef Gave him a small extension. Uh, Brandon Scherf signed a free agency. And again, this is the cap hit number, not the actual number. I think we gave him, what, $17 million? It was It was stupid. Shaq Barrett, we gave $21 million per year. Don't care. So, the money that you would have spent on Daniil, you just spend on Shaq Barrett, and then you get uh, two firsts and a second from Tennessee. It sucks, but I get it. Keanu O'Neill also comes in as a starter at safety. Demarcus Walker's defensive line depth. Uh, and then for the draft, so trade up, get Zach Wilson. Now, Zach Wilson could be a stand-in for Justin Fields or Trey Lance, and I, I don't expect Wilson to fall in the top five, but here we are. And the Vikings still got Christian Darius at 22, where, I mean, you're, you're good to go on the offensive line. Left to right. Day one, it'll be Reef and Ezra and Bradbury and 
and uh, Brandon Scherf. How could you forget him? And Brian O'Neill. But Derisaw is estate planning. He's going to be a left tackle of the future. He can be the swing right away. Also, we got Josh Myers. Uh, late night with Josh Myers uh, as an interior guy that can back up all three spots as well as be that hedge just in case Bradbury isn't that dude. Got Ronnie Perkins in the second round. So you got Shaq. You got Shaq Barrett, you got Ronnie Perkins, you got DJ Wan, you got Daniil, you got Weatherly. Let's go. Let's go. Ooh, plus we got Chauncey Golston. Plus we got Kenny Willikis. Let's go. Let's get some. Uh, we got Cisco as well as Hufanga to be those uh, third and fourth safeties, uh, mixing in with Josh Metellus. We got Anthony Schwartz uh, as well as Daz Newsom, both speedy wide receivers, both solid route runners, and both going to help in the return game. So, yeah, them behind Jefferson and Thielen. Let's get some. Uh, Pete Werner for uh, linebacker depth, Calvin Joseph, a, a guy that I like from Kentucky. Uh, you, you add him to the cornerback room, and then – we drafted the kicker and the punter just to own the libs, as well as uh, we got another Bama tight end, because why the hell not? So, like I said, I am not one for training Daniel Hunter, but the you know the, the chain reaction of what could happen if the Vikings do get their mitts on these picks, and I, I'm I say pay Daniel Hunter, but if he's adamant about leaving, you you sh- should get top dollar for him. Like I want not Tunsil. That, that's ridiculous. That was Bill O'Brien. But you want to be in the neighborhood of Jamal Adams. You want to be in the neighborhood of uh, the Khalil Mack uh, compensation. So Vikings are able to do that. Tennessee gets that edge rusher that they've been looking for for so long, and we move on with life. But still feels weird. Still feels weird. But your thoughts, full Vikings offseason. If they do trade Daniel Hunter to the Tennessee Tattoons, let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. I'll support that work post on November. But until next time, Skull production value.